Welcome back to Yachts, the perfect escape vehicle. Uh, we were discussing uh, insider secrets to buying yachts uh, with Gary and Stephen. And um, Stephen, we were discussing the benefits of new versus pre-owned. Uh, can you give us the benefits of buying a new boat? I'll give you a few pros and cons. Um, surprisingly, there are not many choices in new boats. There are probably five to seven main manufacturers in the world, um, and they manufacture a range of boats starting in, right in the 30s and ending in the 50s. Um, there's some, some substantial price, price fluctuations. So, uh, you know, your, your choices in new are limited because obviously the, 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 the manufacturer and the, the range of catamarans manufactured has definitely zeroed in, narrowed down to, to not as many as they used to in the old days. Um, the good thing about a new boat is obviously that there are no inherited problems. If you buy a used boat, you often inherit uh, issues and latent defects that uh, you only find out about later. If you buy a new boat, you're also getting the newest designs. Uh, materials and construction have changed substantially over the years. In the old days, they used to be very heavily built uh, because no one really knew how strong fiberglass was. Uh, in today's designs, the engineering is far advanced, and so you find that there's far lighter in, uh, construction. Mostly now, instead of hand laminates and bulkheads, they're resin-infused. A lot of foams and cores are used today. Um, so, you know, Kev Kevlon carbon materials are used as well to keep weight down. So overall, technology in new boats has certainly come a long way, and if you buy new you benefit from the new boat. Um, also, new boats, because they carry warranties, have a lot less maintenance in the first five years. So if you buy a new boat, you, you, you have relatively trouble-free use for five years. That, can, that includes the sails, engines, props, everything. You know, the boat should, should give you very little trouble. After that, it becomes... It, it exponentially goes up. Um, if you finance a new boat, generally finance companies are happier with a new boat. Um, they don't even require a, f a survey on a new boat. But they, they accept that the manufacturer has produced a new boat for you, and uh, so your interest rates are low. But, of course, the other thing, that, that the negative side to that is that new boats depreciate quicker, much like a car. When you drive it out the showroom, the value drops. Um, so you, got to, you have to accept that uh, your, your boat's going to depreciate and your boat's going to depreciate very quickly at the beginning and then stable out after three or four years. So if you're in a five to ten year cycle, this really shouldn't matter too much to you, but it's something to consider. Um, lastly, new boats can also have bugs just like used boats. Um, and if you're going to go cruising on a, on a new boat, you should probably take, a, take possession of it about a year before your intended departure date so that you have time to sail it and get all the bugs out of it. Uh, you know, a lot of these bugs would be covered by manufacturer or equipment warranties, so it's not a big deal financially, but when you leave, you want to know that all the bugs are out of your boat. Um, uh, Gary is going to give us some info on, on the pros and cons of used boats. Remember that when you're looking for used boats, there are many more choices. For example, today, in the world, if you're looking at 30 feet and larger, there are over 120,000 used boats available in the world. If you look at the different models of new, there's vastly less. So you got more choices. Um, Another thing about used boats is you, sometimes you can get more boat for the money. You know, because they do depreciate, uh, you can get a bigger boat for less money. And talking about depreciation, they typically depreciate in the first year around 15 to 20 percent. Second year, it's somewhat less. Let's just say 12 percent. Third year, 10 percent. At some point, the depreciation can level off and it can stop. And what I've noticed is that in generally the sixth or seventh year, depreciation will stay steady if you maintain the boat to a reasonable condition. And uh, 
So you may want to try, when you're buying a boat, to capture the most appreciation for the newest boat. So I would consider looking at like a three-year-old boat or maybe a four-year-old boat uh, to do that. Um, a problem with used boats is you can inherit problems. Now, in the process of buying a used boat, you will engage a marine surveyor, which we're going to talk about later, but they generally will inspect the boat and tell you what all the defects are that are going to have to be remedied for the intended use. So you always want to tell your surveyor, you're going to sail around the world, or you're going to coastal cruise, or you're going to go park it in a marina and sit in it somewhere, or you just want to tell them what you're going to do with the boat. Yeah, talk about um, older boats. Uh, we have a funny story about um, uh, old Prouts now. I know Prout has been built for probably 40 years or more, and these boats are heavy, heavy boats. They don't sail wonderfully, but boy, their owners love them, and you can buy them, well, you can buy them for a song uh, if, if you can find an owner who would actually give it up. Anyway, so uh, now we have the, pre, the pros and cons of new and old, or new and pre-owned, rather. Um, we, you, uh, Gary, you started talking there about um, surveyors. Uh, what, uh, what tips do you have for us about surveyors? Well, you want to hire the surveyor who specializes in the type of boat that you're looking for. Uh, you know, surveyors are kind of like lawyers. If you ask a lawyer, well, can you uh, advise me on this or whatever, they'll all say, oh, yeah, of course. But then they'll go hire the specialist to actually do the work. You know what I'm saying? And a surveyor is kind of the same way. <laughs> they'll, they may bluff you and, and lead you to believe that they know more about that particular type of boat than they really do. So I would always try and find a specialist for the type of boat you're looking for. And if that is a catamaran, you want to find a catamaran specialist. If it's a trawler yacht, look for somebody like that. And your broker can tell you who they are. One question I'd ask them is, well, how many boats like this have you surveyed in the last year? And if he's done less than about five, you may want to keep looking for another surveyor. Stephen, you have something? Um, not, well, you know, generally what, what I think the smart thing to do is, is to ask your broker to give you five surveyors that he has vetted. And then get, you choose, you make the final choice so that the surveyor ultimately is working exclusively for you. It's, it's just a good fail safe to know that you have actually appointed the surveyor and he's working specifically for you. Um, another interesting issue when you're buying your boat is flagging. Uh, that's a, this is a decision that you need to make. If you are going to finance the boat, generally you, you, you sh you're going to have to flag it a, 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 in the U.S. simply because uh, it has to, you know, the, the lender wants to have a leanable, a leanable document. If you can buy the boat cash, it's a very good thing to flag it offshore. Flagging offshore has a lot of advantages. Um, of course, the biggest advantage is that if you're offshore flagged, you have no federal t taxes and you have no state taxes. If you want to bring the boat into the United States, you bring it in on what's called a cruising permit. It's valid for one year, costs 19 bucks. Um, there are restrictions in that every time you move, you have to report to the uh, Department of Homeland Security, but it's a pretty streamlined process now. It's an 800 number, you call in, you report you've moved, and uh, everybody's happy. You need to leave once a year for 14 days, and when you return, you, they will, the, the authorities will reissue you a cruising permit for another one year. Um, very popular jurisdictions are Cayman, British Virgin Islands, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and you'll see that a lot of the boats that travel between the U.S. and the Med actually have uh, are flagged in jurisdictions where there are no taxes. Um, it's just, it's just a bit. It's, it's a very smart way to own the boat uh, in 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 a, in a foreign corporation. I was asked to talk about insurance uh, because we have about a minute to go, and what I would tell you about that is that you, you want to 
not over-insure your boat. Um, you know, many people will call their agent and say, oh, we're going to cruise around the world and blah, blah, blah. Well, you're going to pay a lot more money if you tell them that. The best thing to do is say, okay, this spring we're going to go from Florida to the Bahamas, and then we're going to take it from there. So you should, when you book your insurance, just book that area that you're going to go to for the next six months and then when you're ready to move on you tell your agent okay we're they're going to go south some more and and they'll just uh change the binder and and get you insured for that other new area uh you also want to only work with agreed upon value policies and uh because that that they can't depreciate the boat well, we're running out of time, so uh, you've been listening to Yachts, the perfect escape vehicle. This has been Gary Fretz, Stephen Cocroft, Estelle Cocroft. We'll see you next week at 3 p.m. Eastern U.S. time on the Overseas Radio Network.